Hello guys and welcome to Exhibit. This review is specific to Apple 13 Pro Max. So there's not much of a difference between 13 Pro Max and the 13 Pro except the size, weight and the money of course. You know there are three kinds of people in the world as we speak. The first user type are the type of people who are using the Apple 11, 10, 9, 8, 6 perhaps. The second user type are the kind of guys who just bought the 12 Pro Max. Yes, my condolences. The third user type are the Android people who are still wearing the periphery and wanting to come back and switch to Apple. So, I'm going to make this review specific to all the three types and for the Apple 12 Pro Max, I have five reasons and for the Android people, please stay on till the end of the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I'll give you a detailed answer as to why you should and why you should not and what is your next best pick. Uh, for the first user type, let's address that question first. For the first user type who've been using the Apple 11 and 10, just go and buy the 13 Pro because it's worth every damn penny of it, yes. You will be sorted, you will be don't have to buy the phone for the next 3-4 years because you'll have an updated smartphone with latest, latest in tech, latest in battery life, latest in everything that you would ask for and it's a good switch. For the second user type, those who have drilled a hole in the wallet by buying the 12 Pro Max, this is a desert which can be skipped. Yes, the Pro Motion, the cinematic mode, the 120Hz refresh rate, a huge piece of battery. These are features which are going to be difficult to resist, but this can be skipped. And I've narrowed it down to five specific points which you should consider while upgrading or not to upgrade from 12 Pro Max to 13 Pro Max. For the third user type, the Android guys, the only, the only similarity between Android and Apple is the first letter in the alphabet. Yes, it both starts with A, A and it ends there. But you guys can hang on till the end of the video and we'll answer that question also. Let's move on then. That's the first point, the battery. Now the 12 Pro Max is a battery of 3687 mAh and the Apple 13 Pro Max is a battery of 4352 mAh. Now you see that's a huge difference. Now in real life, I recently went to Pondicherry. I took a 6 a.m. flight, landed in Chennai in 9 a.m. and I watched a movie in between for three hours non-stop in full resolution. Then I took a, took a car, I drove to Pondicherry for three hours. I was using the GPS entire journey. I used the Bluetooth. I stopped on the way. I took pictures for the gram. I made videos. Then of course I did some sightseeing in Pondicherry. I used it for phone calls. I did tons of things till 9 p.m. I still had the juice left. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Easily the most optimized battery ever in a smartphone. Yes, if battery is something I'm looking for, then Apple 13 Pro Max is definitely going to be a huge upgrade. Resolution and refresh rate. We, won't, we know that the Apple 13 Pro Max comes in a 120Hz refresh rate. Now that single upgrade is a huge upgrade because we know 12 Pro comes in a 60Hz refresh rate and they both have the same 6.7 inch uh, screen size. Both have 1284 and 2788 pixels. Both have 458 PPI density with Super Retina XDR OLED. Both are, you know, having about, but 13 Pro Max gets 1000 nits of HBM, whereas in the 12 Pro Max, you get about 800 nits. The refresh rate experience is so seamless and fluid in the 13 Pro Max. So once you get used to that, you begin to hate the 60 years of experience, yes. But the good part guys, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. If you've not experienced the 120 years of fresh rate, you really won't miss it and you can still live with the 12 Pro Max. You won't really miss it, yes. Camera and optics. So this is where the Apple 13 Pro Max has completely got the battlefield down, hands down. It's really a game changer. The, look at the com camera comparison. I've made a, we made a comparison sheet between the 12 Pro Max, the 13 Pro Max and also we picked up the closest, the Samsung S21 5G Ultra. And look at it, you know how 13 Pro Max stacks up. It's really quite there, you know, the camera has been, you know, when Apple launched the 12 Pro Max, uh, the three 12 megapixel cameras on the rear, they made a very big deal about it because, you know, it had a huge capability of taking uh, low light photography, the night, night, uh, the night video mode. Now with the 13 Pro Max, they also get the macro photography. Basically, when you get closer to the subject, the ultra wide camera kicks in and you get stellar images. So with this, the camera, of course, if you're looking for a great picture taking capacity, 13 Pro Max, it's definitely the one. And since the iPhone saves the videos in RAW, the depth map and the defined focus points are separate from each other, allowing the focus of the video to be actually edited afterwards, not only on the iPhone 13 itself, but also on other devices, on MacBook or whatever you're you know, doing it. 
And as for the recording, cinematic mode is currently available in the wide angle and telephotic cameras at the back as well as a selfie camera but more on the cinematic on my fifth point. Now let's come to the fourth point, the chipset. Chipset is basically the engine, the heart of a smartphone, you know, it is what the harness is all about. It's which binds everything together, the camera, the optics, the usability, the features, everything actually responses because of the chipset, because what is under the hood, you know what we call it, is the engine which runs the smartphone. 12 Pro Max had 814 Bionic chipset. Now with Apple 13 Pro, they have launched A15 Bionic chipset, which is a huge upgrade from its previous predecessors. In fact, it's one of the fastest chipsets around, comparable to Snapdragon 888 Plus, but in some ways it's better than the Snapdragon also, but let me come to that in a bit. Now, if you want to know the technical parts, let me tell you. In fact, the new 6-core CPU in the A15 is about 20 to 50% faster than most smartphones, A14 included, Snapdragon 888 included. A15 has a neural engine and can process up to about 15.8 trillion operations per second. 15.8 trillion operations, which is about 40% faster than the A14, you know. A14 can do about 11 trillion operations per second. And just to keep things in perspective, the A13 chip could do only 8.9 billion operations per second. So you see, A15 is right up the mark. You know, it's really uh, pushed the envelope in terms of processing. There's nothing as comparable to the A15. So in essence, you have the fastest engine under the hood. So the A15 chipset is really very fast. The fifth point, the cinematic mode. Let's call it the final lane. Much has been spoken, much has been talked about the cinematic mode and it is completely, completely a game changer. I keep saying game changer because that is a game changer. With the cinematic mode, they have taken the, in fact, they've changed the battlefield. They've taken it from the smartphone to the purebred imaging companies like Fujifilm, Nikon, Nikon, Canon, you know, and they should be actually worried because it is actually going to change a lot of things. Now, what is a cinematic mode? Cinematic mode is something basically it creates a digital illusion. Now, everything that you shoot is basically on the foreground. The computer separates that and it picks the topic which should be in focus. And there's something called foreground, there's something called background, the depth, and all of this is all managed through a software and it does really very well. Cinematic mode actually mimics professional videography techniques by adding on the fly depth of field effects to recognize subjects. Software algorithms are used to detect and focus on people, pets and objects which are made to stand out against black backgrounds. Now you see with these five points you can decide whether you want to upgrade from 12 Pro Max to 30 Pro Max and if you're an Android user, if you want to stay on the Android uh, periphery then Samsung S21 5G Ultra is the closest that you can get to. Yes, it is a phenomenal smartphone, checks in a lot of balances. You've seen the comparison. We'll drop a comparison chart at the end of the video between the Apple 12 Pro, 13 Pro Max and the Samsung S21 5G Ultra. But if you like Apple, for all the reasons that I've said, go and take a look at the 13 Pro Max. You won't be disappointed. If not, then the 12 Mini is also as good a phone, as good an Apple experience as any other smartphone. How do you like this video? Tell us on the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon. Until the next one, take care.